Hello and welcome to the 97th video by Pale Blue Thoughts. Religion has always tried to hijack science for many years now. All religions, irrespective of what they believe in, has always tried to borrow what science has found out about reality and our universe and tried to push it in their religious texts. Then they can sit back, relax and say that all this was mentioned thousands of years ago in their texts. All religions do it and that is why we have heard about oceanology, embryology, microbiology in the Quran, gravity, water cycle and the earth's core in the Bible and the Newton's laws of motion, flight technology and nuclear warfare in the ancient Vedas and Upanishads. Ironically, these claims are often made after science discovers it and never before, ever. No one has, in my knowledge, ever predicted something today which science certifies as true later. I will concentrate on one such claim in an ancient Indian text today. The claim that we knew the distance between the earth and the sun thousands of years ago before science found it. I am referring to the Hanuman Chalisa, a composition by a poet named Tulsi Das in the 16th century. He composed the Ramacharita Manasa, a story of Rama retold in the Avadi language which was intended to make the story more accessible to the general public. Many believers regularly recite the Hanuman Chalisa, a prayer glorifying Hanuman, again written by Tulsi Das. Believers quote two lines from this poem to try and prove that the ancient sages knew the distance between the sun and the earth. Before we get too deep into the topic, I would like to introduce a logical fallacy here. It's called hindsight bias. Hindsight bias, also known as the knew it all along phenomenon, is the common tendency for people to perceive past events as having been more predictable than they actually were. Once an actual event has occurred, it is easy for anyone to backtrack and say that we knew it all along. First, a disclaimer before I start, just so that people who don't watch the entire video would not start jumping with their swords out before I'm done talking. I am not pointing fingers at Tulsi Das who wrote this. He was just writing a poem which later came to be called as one of the best works of Hindu literature. I am addressing this to the people who try to smuggle in their pseudoscience to distort the meaning of the otherwise ordinary verses. Let us see how they do it and then we will see how accurate they were. According to folklore, Hanuman in his childhood, assuming the sun to be a ripe fruit, jumped to catch it. Tulsi Das recounts this incident in his Hanuman Chalisa as follows. <laughs> Yuga Sahasra Yojana Parabhanu Liliyotahi Madhura Palajanu When translated from Avadi, these lines simply mean On your own you dashed upon the sun, which is thousands of yojanas away, thinking it to be a sweet fruit. No mention of any scientific truths and the situation too doesn't match the setting. Moreover, the book is not a science textbook or a book which has been written to explain the distance from the earth to the sun. Even in those days, there were many texts which dealt with astronomy and yet this doesn't appear anywhere on them. Now I watched a few YouTube videos on this subject and they all refer to these three words, Yuga, Sahasra, Yojana, as the line which talks about the distance. The rest is all taken as part of the poem and doesn't form part of this justification. Let us see these three words specifically. Yuga was a standard of measurement of time in ancient religious texts. Sahasra is a word for thousand and Yojana was a measurement of distance in olden times. Now poets often use poetic sounding verses to enhance the beauty of their poetry. Of course, people in those days knew that the sun was very very far away and the poet too used his poetic license to enhance his creation a bit by saying that Hanuman tried to reach out to the sun which was thousands of yojanas away. People who tried to find signs where there isn't cunningly use this to their advantage. 
all of the YouTube videos and blogs written on the subject decipher the three words like this. One Yuga is equals to 12,000 years. One Sahasra is 1,000. One Yojana is 8 miles. Thus, 12,000 into 1,000 into 8 is 96 million miles. Now, one mile is 1.6 kilometers and hence 96 million miles multiplied by 1.6 kilometers is 153 million kilometers. Now science has calculated the distance from the sun to earth as around 150 million kilometers approximately. See the similarity? 153 million miles in ancient text versus 150 million by science. Very very close. There is a 3 million kilometer difference but that doesn't matter, right? It is just three followed by six zeros. So what? Science has always taken an error factor in all its equations. So if we add an error factor, then what was written in the poem is absolutely in sync with what science found out centuries later. If you're not convinced, then they bring the aphelion and perihelion into action. That the earth travels in an ellipse and that sometimes the sun is closer to the earth than other times so the distance would vary. At first hearing, it sounds very much plausible and justified. Hail the ancient saints and their wisdom. Alas, if you still believe this, it is time to take out your standard 5 physics textbook and study it one more time. If you can't find it, just Google dimensional analysis and you will find a Wikipedia page for it. Please read it. First things first. In physics, there is something called as dimensions and units of dimensions. For example, let's take speed as an example. It is the distance traveled in unit time and it is measured in kilometers per second. Now let us look at the so-called equation in the ancient text. Here yuga, a measurement of time is multiplied by a number and then multiplied by a unit of distance, yojana. And you get the answer as a measure of distance. How? Like how? How can you multiply distance by time and get distance as the final answer? The only place where distance is multiplied by time is in a physical measurement called apsiment. In physics, apsiment or abscission is the measure of how much an object has gone away from its initial position and for how long. It is measured as a distance multiplied by time. And the applications of apsiment is very limited and very specific to kinematics in particular. A similar analogy from real life to make you understand this easier would be a statement that my wife has gone from my house to a mall two kilometers away for the last two hours. But apsiment doesn't yield me a result in distance. You can't multiply the distance she went, that is two kilometers, with two hours and conclude that she is now four kilometers away. In exactly the same way, you can't multiply yojana with yuga and get distance. The number sahasra doesn't matter. It is similar to the gravitational constant g, unchanging. Now a lot of people are still debating on how many years is a yuga and how many miles is a yojana. A yojana is usually 12 to 15 kilometers, but even among ancients, you can see that they have been fighting over it. In Surya Siddhanta and Aryabhatiya, both Sanskrit treatises written on ancient astronomy, a yojana has been described as 8 kilometers or 5 miles. 14th century mathematician Parameswara defined it as 13 kilometers or 8 miles. Bhagavata Purana also mentions it as 8 miles. However, other traditional Indian scholars give the measurement as between 6.4 kilometers to 8 kilometers, that is between 4 to 5 miles. So as with many other traditional Indian measurements, there is varying degree of uncertainty in the actual measurement of a yojana. Of course, people who wants to push this agenda forward would cherry pick what fits into their model carefully discarding what doesn't fit into their equation. A yuga too has the same issues as it has not been well defined. Hindu texts define lifespans or yugas differently for humans, forefathers, gods, ancestors of mankind or manus and Brahma 
the creator god there is supposedly four yugas which are satya yuga equaling 1.7 million human years treta yuga which is close to 13 million human years dwapara yuga 8.64 lakh years and kali yuga which is equivalent to 4 lakh 32000 years as per the current indian astronomical calculations we are in kali yuga which started at 3102 bce and 2021 is the 5122nd year of the kali yuga how do they calculate this no idea maybe they followed the james usher's dating methodology where he found out that the world began on 23rd october 4004 bc who knows now where did this number 12000 come from the only reference to this that is the only time this number 12000 appears in the calculation of yuga is that the 432000 years of kali yuga is equivalent to 12000 divine years as mentioned in a footnote with so many numbers to play with why choose that exact number so again cherry picking is in action here where does it say in the text that it is kali yuga that he was referring to as per ancient text ram was supposed to have lived in the 24th treta yug so why would we need to assume that it was the kali yuga could it be because someone found this number convenient to arrive at the distance that science discovered the hanuman chalisa has 40 verses and only these three words contain a deeply hidden scientific knowledge and the rest is just a poem praising hanuman makes a pill very hard to swallow i don't think i need to go into any further proofs in order to debunk this claim today science has accurately described the distance to the sun as 149,597,870.700 kilometers and they have not based it on any poems to arrive at this science arrived at it through rigorous measurements and experiments the first rigorous and accurate scientific measurement of the earth sun distance was made by cassini in 1672 by parallax measurements of mars a century later a series of observations of transits of venus provided an even better estimate later we have improved its accuracy by using reflected radio waves and more recently by studying the reflection of photons these have enabled us to precisely pinpoint the distance to within a few meters of precision if not more all things looked into it is easy to see that the claim of a sun earth distance in hanuman chalisa is a pseudo scientific extension of a devotional poetic verse done later on for some propaganda neither the poet or anyone who heard the verses and recited it for centuries would have thought that it contains such signs until someone good at math and a greatly stretched imagination decided to push in random numbers to make it sound believable to gullible public who won't even think twice before swallowing it head gut and tail included those people may not still get it and may as usual resort to ad hominem all i can say is take the wool of the eyes and look skeptically if you actually read the astronomy texts of those times you would know that we did not have the tools or theory to measure the distance to the sun forget that we still believed the earth to be flat and assumed a geocentric model where the earth was the center of the universe and the sun and the planets revolved around us i have made detailed explanations of this in my story of the sky series and the horror scope series where we debunked astrology my sincere request to all those who are trying to glorify the ancient past please stop looking for signs in ancient religious texts and mythological stories you are not likely to find any as they were not written for that reason and don't go leading the evidence where you want to go let the evidence lead if someone had discovered the secret of this verse and told the world before science did it would have made sense but to go back and look for the closest match in an ancient text in order to claim that we had a great history is a poor portrayal of our culture also why would someone try to hide such an important knowledge inside three words in a perfectly otherwise normal devotional poem and expect others to find it years later 
Is this some kind of hide and seek game that the saints of yesteryears fancied playing? If there is a groundbreaking discovery that they have made through revelation, then they should have been bold enough to lay it down bare than trying to play the catch me if you can puzzles. If there are any real scientific works from our past, we should try to seek them out instead of inserting wrong context and connotations to arrive at what science has found out after repeated experiments and observations. By doing these willful insertions, you are only making this country, its heritage and its culture to be a laughing stock in front of the whole world. All I can say is, don't over glorify the past, but build on the present so that we can all have a better future. I hope you like this video. For watching more videos regarding misconceptions and superstitions and for knowing the real science behind them, please subscribe to this channel. Until next time, it's bye bye from Pale Blue Thoughts.